I believe that what I'm going to say tonight deserves some consideration. All right? We're not talking salvation. We're not talking about anything other than one of the most important subjects on earth other than the gospel. The message tonight is seed war. Seed war. Genesis 3.14, you see, there's always been war on two seeds from the very fall of Adam and still going on. The Lord God said to the serpent, now let me read something. Quote, the serpent who deceived Eve was regarded by the Jews as the devil, end quote. Now, I don't have a problem with either of you, whether the serpent was Satan. You know, he can transfer into another image. If he can transfer his evil, ugly self to an angel of light, then he, he might be able to even appear as a snake, a serpent. I don't really care whether he did or whether he spoke to the serpent. It's irrelevant to me. But the fact is, the serpent according to the Jews, was Satan. And if we take that approach, I do not have a problem with it. Do you? Because what thou hast done, thou art cursed above the cattle. Now, we know it's talking about a snake here, but I'm talking about something deeper than just a snake or a serpent. Thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field, upon the belly shalt thou go... And dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. We know that's talking about a snake. But there's always a double reference here in the Scripture. Now the next verse is where we get into this dilemma. Now this is God speaking. I will put enmity between you and the woman. Here it comes. And between your seed and her seed. Between Satan's seed and the woman's seed. Amen. The serpent doesn't have a seed. The snake, no. He can't intertwine with a woman. Now... If I was going to write a dissertation on this, it would be thrown out of the university. But I don't care anymore. You hear me? I don't care anymore. I don't care. I like that song. Phil Collins, I like that song. I don't care anymore. I sent that to Brandon. <laughs> Never mind. I'm honorary. I know. But he said, that's right. Yeah, I don't care. But God said he'd put in the your division between Satan's seed and the woman's seed. Now, we know that the woman's seed was talking about the Savior. Nevertheless, do you know that Satan has a seed? Uh, I, we had this UFO thing going on, and I don't think they're from outer space. I think they can materialize from an inner space, from another dimension. And they are not subject to gravity like we think about. We're going to find out one of these days. I mean, Ezekiel saw a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Uh, so I don't want to get on that, but... You know, there is other dimensions, and there are other dimensions, I should say. Should say and uh, Satan came from another dimension. Now, Jesus, as I read this morning, uh, came from heaven. But, you know, Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, according to Revelation. That happened in the past. It will happen again in the future. But it didn't happen in the past because Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. Now, where was the devil? Well, he was in heaven. 
Where is heaven? Another dimension. Is anybody listening to that? Well, the devil's seed, this has always been the conflict for 6,000 years. The devil's seed against a woman's seed. That's the problem. Well, there you go. You're going to get off in the new age. <sighs> Say what you will. I tell you, God's word is deeper and higher and wider than we can comprehend. But for those of us that can receive some revelation, what we're going to say, I believe, is 99, 9 tenths percent true. There's always a, a, a possibility of strain of touch, but I'm not off too far now on this. There is a seed of the woman, and there is a seed of Satan. Now, in Bible school days, they taught us, Sister Melissa, that, well, Cain's offspring was the bad guys, see? No, Cain was the offspring of Adam, not Satan. <laughs> what are you saying? Do you really want to know or should we go home now? I mean, let's look at Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2 then. This has always been the problem and the modern day church just does not want to deal with it because it's Ooh, supernatural. <laughs> Verse 2, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to go into this subject because you know that with the fallen angels that came, Enoch bears that up, and then... They came down and took women, and whether those women were forced or not, I know not, but they produced hybrids, Satan's seed. <laughs> and verse 4, the result of that were uh, giants in the earth. Can you imagine a giant as tall as this ceiling here, 12 foot, 18 foot? What are you going to do with the skeletons that are found? See? So, oh, well, now there's no oh, well to it. Something was going on. And uh, <clears throat> the Bible has already told us there were giants to earth in those days and also after that. So before the flood of Noah, there was giants. And after the flood of Noah, there was giants. Satan's seed was on the move. Now, They'd bear children of all them. Now, when they bore children, they were the Nephilim, Satan's seed, even though they were part human and part fallen angel. The offsprings were still infected. Their DNA, the gene pool was corrupted. And my theory is because some people get demon possessed easy or because some people seemingly can't be saved is they're not 100% human. This has always been the problem. Now, I'll disprove that. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37. Well, you're talking like you think there's hybrids among us. Ding, ding. I want to tell you all something. They're the hybrids or the demon possessed. What's the difference? There's a little bit of difference. One is... is Demonic spirits, and one is the genes corrupted, which allows Satan to send demons to possess them because he's got a right to. He has authority to do that because they're really, in the beginning, his seed. Now, I know you can't accept it. Well, just listen to me. Matthew 24 and verse 37 I don't usually get on this kind of stuff, especially with the Africans, so you're probably going to tune out about it now. I don't know. But they're willing to listen, at least. Where am I at here? I'm not in Kenya. General. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. Now. Do you know why God killed everybody in the flood of Noah? Most of you know. Because their seed was corrupt by Satan. 
He try, tried to stop the Messiah from coming and to pervert the bloodline of Mary, who they thought they cannot corrupt the bloodline of, of Jesus. His blood came from heaven. And so, specifically, Satan's seed was trying to corrupt the gene pool of the human race to prevent the Savior from coming and being legal. It's kind of disproven. And that's why God killed them all. I said, that's why God killed them all. Then he told the Israelites, even in the land of Canaan, Go in and kill everybody, burn everything, kill every man, woman, and child, kill the animals. You know why? They were all corrupted by the seed of Satan. I just can't accept it. Give me another reason why God would command that. The seed was corrupt. Now we got a little hint in Daniel chapter 2, verse 43 B. <laughs> Daniel chapter 2. We got a hint here now. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about humans intermingling with angels, or Nephilim, or Rephraim, and their progenitory all the way down. That's what I'm talking about. You're trying to scare me. Look, if you're saved, I'm not talking about you. But you ever read Jude, Cursed Children? Folks, this thing is more serious than we think. But thank God, you're saved. doesn't pertain to you. But we need to know what's going on. Even today, we need to know. Look, if somebody comes to you and their eyes turn black, are like a serpentine snake, are their voice changes? You got yourself a demon or a hybrid. Look at Daniel chapter 2 and verse 43. B. I'll, I'll read all of it for the sake of argument here. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. Now, let me, let me go to B now. They... Who's they? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. <laughs> Who's they? <laughs> You're trying to scare me. They shall mingle with the seed of men. Men don't produce offsprings. Women do. Who's mingling with who here? I'm su suggesting that the probability and the evidence points to we got a big problem in the human race. And it's because of the war between the two seeds. You say, well, why is it going on now for? Because Satan tried to prevent the Savior from coming and corrupt the Gina pool. And, and, but why is he doing it now? Does anybody want to know why? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. He wants to per pervert Christianity and stop the church from being really redeemed. If you got bad DNA, you cannot be saved. Disproven. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Now go over to Jude chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Where'd you get this stuff? Folks, it's in the Bible. It's just pre preachers don't have enough intestinal fortitude to teach it like it really is because the crowd gets spooked because the ghost is going to get them. Well, I want the Holy Ghost. I don't want no demon, and I'm not listening to no Nephilim. Praise God. They're messing with the, with the genetics right now. You go to Revelation, hair like a woman, face like a lion. Hey. It's still satanic. Now, Noah had this problem to repeat, and God killed everybody because of this problem. 
And so shall it be in the days of coming of the Son of Man. Same problem. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. How do I do this? Jude 6 and 7. All right. And the angels which kept not their first estate, well, they they were in heaven's abode in the other dimension. They were not allowed to cross to the stargate. They disobeyed the will of God because Satan wanted to send the angels to pervert the geno pool. He didn't succeed. Jesus came, paid the price. He failed again, but he's still trying to, trying to pervert the church and pervert Christianity the very same way. You'd be surprised, and maybe you wouldn't be surprised, of the women that love to have a relationship with the fallen angel. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he has reserved an everlasting change under darkness to be judged to the judgment of the great day. Now, those angels that did this sin, no forgiveness, they're in chains of darkness and tartar roll, waiting to be judged. But the offsprings of what they produced were the giants. I'm saying Goliath was an Ephraim. Six fingers, six toes, one guy in the Old Testament slept on a bed of nails eight foot long. How tall was that guy? At least 12 foot, because you know his feet hung over the bed. <laughs> traditional, tr traditional Christianity, oh, the giant was about eight foot, maybe. <sighs> hey, Wilt Chamberlain, seven foot three, come on. No, folks. So the angels came down, produced the race of giants, Satan's seed. I'm going to go further even say tonight that Satan is going to produce an offspring, literally. <laughs> oh, boy. Who do you think the son of perdition is anyway? Well, look at verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah... And the cities round about them in like manner gave themselves to fornication, going after strange flesh, set forth as an example, serving the vengeance of eternal fire. So Jude, make, Jude makes reference to these things. And Satan wanted to stop <clears throat> the Messiah from coming to the earth and being the Savior for the human race. He failed, yes. But to repeat, his efforts are continuing on to corrupt the gene pool and pervert salvation for a human being. Now, not every, not every baby that's born is 100% human. Now, I know I'm off of the sci-fi, but just consider what I'm saying. I watch sci-fi. I'm saying tonight that it seems to me that hybrid beings cannot be born again. Demons are hybrids. What's the difference? There's a little bit of difference. Now, in, in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, back to the New Testament again, please. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that time shall not come except to come a fallen away first. And that man of sin be revealed, say with me, the son of perdition. Now, the son of perdition. The one that's coming, who is the Antichrist, will be called and known as the son of perdition. Amen. 
And what he wants to do, what Satan wants to do, is eventually stop the rapture because if he can pervert the rapture, then there's nobody going getting out of here. Now, this is somewhat out on a limb here, but we need to consider these things. <clears throat> Why is it some people can't be saved? Why is it? Seem like no matter what you do, they just can't give in. They, can't, they just cannot. <clears throat> Why is that? You need to go overseas and run around for about 30 days. You find out there are people that are possessed of demons. Well, like, for example, Acts chapter 13, and let's look at verse 6 to 11 tonight. Now, again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just saying these things are occurring today. They're doing experimentation on children. They steal them. No telling what they're doing in the labs. Are we that naive to think that Satan has changed? He has not changed. He's not going to change until Christ puts him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Then he'll not be able to do these things. But he's trying to pervert the human race, not only through demonism, but humanoidism. Now, in Acts, uh, Acts 13, verse 6, look at this. When they had gone through the Isle of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. That's the reason you need to stay out of the bars. Bar-Jesus. That's as close as they can get. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulius, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. That's a good deal. He was wanting to know. But Elamus, the sorcerer, for so his name is interpreted, withstood them, seeking to turn the deputy from the faith. There's the opposition. Seed war. Seed war. See, we read this, oh, well, he was just a bad dude. No, there's more to it than this. Then Saul, who's called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Uh-oh. Now get this. And said, O fill of all subtility and all mischief, thou child of the devil. You enemy of all unrighteousness, all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist in the darkness, and he went about seeking someone leaning by the hand. No evidence he was ever saved. None. Why is that? We're saying tonight he was the child of the devil. The seed of the devil, if you will. Yeah, focus that. I want to talk to the Africans here in a minute. You know, you got a lot of seeds of the devil right over there. And you're going to have to cast them out and put them under your feet. Get them out of the church. If they're a child of the devil, they can't repent. Excommunicate them. You're pretty straight on this. Yes, I am. So you see, the gospel has opposition, and I'm saying sometimes the opposition is more than just human behavior that's ill. Why was there opposition? Now, I looked at that word, that word child. Any student can do this. Paul said, child of the devil. Let me find it again. Yeah, verse 10. You child of the devil. Everybody say child of the devil. Now, is that just symbolically speaking? No, the Bible is literal. So everyone that's born today is Adam's seed unless the residue of Nephilim got in 
through procreation and produced hybrids. That's what I'm saying. They look like people, act like people, uh, but they're not exactly people. Well, that's, I just can't accept that. Well, you might run into somebody this week, and you're going to find out that they got more than a demon. Their eyes are going to go black. Their tongues stick out with forked tongue like a snake. You got yourself a Nephilim. Folks, don't say this is not going to happen. It happened before Noah. It happened after Noah. And Jesus said, as it was the days of Noah, so shall it be the days of coming to the Son of Man. You might as well get ready. We're voting you out. Can't do it. This word child means, okay, a male offspring, one born of a father and a mother. Isn't that right? But the presupposition is Satan was the father. Now, you look up the word devil, you child of the devil, that's diablos. There's only one devil. And he said that this person was an offspring of the devil, Satan. That Satan was his father. That's what the Bible's teaching. Give me an amen, Heath. I know you agree with me. There's no evidence that this guy repented. Could it be he could not repent? Because there's no salvation for hybrids. Were there 100th hybrid or 50%? What's the difference? They're not totally. Could that be why some people go insane? Could that be why? So, but fear not, child of God. We're living in a supernatural realm here, and we got to know our enemy. Now, if you're a Christian, and I know everybody is here tonight, there's a scripture in Psalms 121 and verse 7 that I hold to. Of course, it's the scripture. Amen. Psalms 121 and verse 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. So what I'm saying tonight, child of God, don't sweat it. It doesn't concern you. But there's beings out here, 8 billion beings. Some of those are perverted, especially over around the Middle East. The thing of it is, see, uh, air travel, back and forth it goes, and uh, eventually the whole human race is going to have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. It may not be to the magnitude as it was in the days of Noah, but I'll tell you the judgment's going to kill off, the, the, the tribulation's going to kill off uh, uh, millions and millions and billions of people. Why? Could it be that God's going to kill them off individually because of the corruption that's in the genes? Could that be? But for us, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. So I'm not worried about this stuff concerning me and my family. I know we're right with God under the blood of the Lamb. But I'm saying there's people out there that cannot be saved. They're cursed. Why would God do that? Satan is the one doing that. Don't blame God. Satan is... Satan's seed is warring against the seed that's righteous. It's been that way. It's going to continue to be that way until God puts a stop to it. But I'm saying there's things coming on this earth that is supernatural from the other dimension. And they're already here, really, mingling with people. You've heard a lot about abduction of the feminine gender into these UFOs or whatever they are. And as I'm trying to scare you tonight, not really, when I was about 12 years old, 
I saw three UFOs. Being in the military, we have nothing to fly that way. They, gravity didn't affect them. I, I watched them for about, me and two other people watched them for probably 10 minutes in space, in the air. In the air. And all of a sudden, they went like this and right straight up and disappeared, just like that. Bam. We don't have anything to fly like, fly like that. So there was something going on. It's been going on for years, and the government's hiding it and covering it up. So it, it, I, it doesn't bother me. We're in the last days, and these things are going to happen. But we got the victory. We got the power. Because the name of Jesus is the power. The Holy Ghost backs it up. Hey, Nephilim don't stand a chance. <laughs> but God help those people that are outside the ark of safety and can't seem to find their way through the cross. Why is that? Well, Satan wants to get back at God, and the only way we can do that is to hurt the Lord by his creation being destroyed by the Nephilim. That's what I'm saying. You need to do your homework about this and find some people who know what they're talking about. I'm just scratching the surface here. But the serpent. Now, this word generation, let me back up here. We're almost through here. Mm, let me go to Matthew 23 for the last verse tonight because I don't think you can take any more. You think I'm nuts now. Well, I live in a van down by the river. Don't worry about it. Amen. If a UFO appeared to me, I don't know if I'd get on that thing or not. Would you get on it? Anybody? Would you? You wouldn't? <laughs> Look, I don't know if they're real. I'm just saying I saw three of them. I don't know what they were. They're un unidentified. But I don't know why I'm on this, but the military has these on radar. Zero, 2,000 miles an hour in a second or two? No, it's not possible. Uh, the the G-force would kill a human. So who's in there? What's in there? I'm saying they're from another dimension if they exist at all, and they do exist. There's no question about that. So what's, what's going to happen? It's going to be more and more and more and more and more until God puts an end to it like he did in Noah's day and like he's going to do when the rapture. You think it's going to be easy in tribulation when the rapture comes, man, all hell's going to break loose in. I mean, every possible evil thing you could think of is going to take place. But Matthew 23 and verse 31. Now, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. I let, yeah, you scribes and Pharisees, 27. Now, why is it Jesus didn't cast out demons out of the Pharisee? Hmm. Well, he said, he said in one place, you are your father, you are your father, the devil. Now, all a human race is not of their father, the devil. They are of Adam. But these dudes, Jesus said, your father's a devil, and the works of him you will do. And I'm saying it's more than demon possession. It's the seed of Satan trying to destroy the seed of God. You have the seed of God if you're born again. Satan wanted to stop that. If you'd have been perverted in your DNA, you couldn't have received the seed of God. No salvation. No resurrection either. You're trying to scare me. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up then the measure of your fathers. You serpents. Everybody say serpents. Now we take this too generally, folks. You generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? 
I thought everybody could repent. Well, you thought wrong. Now, this word, serpents, according to the Jews, refers to Satan. And then the word generation oh, is the offsprings born are begotten. So he said, you serpents, you generation of vipers. Now, you know a viper is a snake-like creature, is it not? Huh? So what he's saying is that, if I can understand it literally, that these Pharisees and the ones that were opposing the seed of God... were begotten, but they were begotten by serpents, and they were a generation of vipers. And he said, how can you escape hell? Well, the answer is they can't because of what we just tried to say. Take it or leave it. That's the deal tonight. Is everybody happy? Wee. The Nephilim is on the rise, everybody. Nephilim is on the rise. In fact, there's a, there's a portal in Arizona. The government sealed it off because they're afraid if they open it, they can't stop entities from coming into our dimension. True. I'd like to go out there, but we can't get in. The government won't let us get in. But if I could go in, I don't know if I'd walk through that thing because you may not get back. So what is it? God knows. Let's stand up tonight. Thank you so much for listening to me. You don't have to believe any of it. But if it's true, and I think it is, we need to be aware of these sayings in the terminal generation before the coming of the Lord, this is what's going to take place. Amen. I think the government's going to reveal some things soon about all of these issues that has been hidden since Area 51, and we're going to find out. But it doesn't affect my salvation and my faith one bit. No, it doesn't concern me, and it doesn't concern you. But those... Seed of Satan and those non-believers, they in big trouble.